Welcome to an episode of Rebel Reviews, where I put myself through shit so you don't have to. You've been through enough shit, look at you. It's this spooky season, it's Halloween, and if you're not horrifying enough to look at, oh my god. <laughs> Whoa, where'd that come from? I meant, turn your face away from the mirrors, bestie, and look at the big screen where Winnie the Pooh awaits. Today I wanted to show you the worst Halloween movie that I could find. Frankly, it was tight, okay? This year was a good year for trash productions. I was torn between this mystery movie, which I will not reveal because I don't want you guys to watch it. I want us to watch it together. But ultimately, this other movie won, Winnie the Pooh. Blood and honey. It's the perfect family movie to take the kids to this year. In fact, this one teacher goes, Great movie! My fourth graders loved it! Well, I watched it too. All of it. And I was genuinely surprised. You know, the cast was acting. There was acting. There was, um, the film was filmed. You know? Somebody, like, they wrote a story. You know, they wrote something. The story was written. There were scenes, too. There was a few scenes. There was this one particular scene where Winnie the Pooh gets on a table and starts yelling, It's pooing time! Proceeds to poo all over the place. Smears the entire place in poo. Fertilizes all of Hundred Acre Woods. It's not the only thing he fertilized in the movie. It was kind of a homoerotic film, if I'm being honest. It's truly really one of the films. One of the films ever. But enough talking, I'm gonna show you now. So, get cozy. Remember, this is a horror movie. I'm gonna leave out most of the details. Then again, so did the director and the screenwriter, so. <laughs> <laughs> movie opens up with a prologue. Basically, a pre-introductory chapter. Just reminding you, for those of you who are not familiar with the Winnie the Pooh story, it's a cute yellow bear and his forest friends, Piglet, some other dude, forgot about them. Who some would describe as a devilish. For this movie, they're kind of irrelevant. And Christopher Robin, the kid who used to sneak into the kitchen and bring them food. Well, the story goes, Christopher needed to go to college. To attend college, to become a doctor. So, so he, he abandoned Pooh. And Pooh didn't like that at all. They starved in the winter, with nobody to bring them food from the kitchen. And they ate one of their besties. Pooh decided that in order to survive, the group must consume one of their dearest friends. Would you eat one of your besties? Would you eat me? Well, you're a bear. Like poo. But that's when they became unhinged, okay? okay. They became animals. Wait. They were animals, though, right? According to the movie, they were more human than they were animals. They renounced their humanity and returned to their animalistic roots. I don't- I don't- this don't look human to me. But the director, he had a different- shut up. Don't argue. The movie was made. We can't change that now. <laughs> okay, so. Chris was showing his future wife, whose name I forgot, because honestly, she didn't really make it past three minutes. Oops, spoiler. She, he wanted to show her a piece of his childhood. His friends. You know, you're the first person I ever shown this place to. Who his wife insisted were imaginary friends. I don't think you're crazy, Chris. Are your imagination run wild? No, but like, insisted. Over the years, you've convinced yourself of They exist, man. You don't need to be ashamed of that. Sh she wouldn't shut up about it. Lots of people have imaginary friends. They're not imaginary, man. That strong imagination of yours, Chris. You don't need to shy away from it. No, like, like, please, woman. I don't think we're going to find them. I get it. I know, I know it's quite hard to deal with. I get, okay. But they still exist in you. <laughs> While they get to the campsite, the vibes are a little off. Next thing I know, they're trembling, hiding from them. You guys wanted to see them, right? Like, you guys were excited. No. But then they run and Piglet grabs the wife. And chokes her. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit here and, you know, watch you choke, choke the, the life, life out, out of, of my, my wife. wife. And ask you to stop. Stop. Piglet, stop. Stop. Stop it. Yes. Sets the scene for the logic for the entire movie, just so you know. Because this movie, for some reason, is turn-based. You can't really do anything while something else is happening. She's getting choked? Wait! for your turn. But don't worry about her, because for some reason her airways, while she was getting choked, were gaping. Chris! Chris, this dude's choking me, hello? Do something! Piglet, stop, I can't do anything, it's not my turn. Anyway, Piglet unalives her. I'm 
I'm not gonna show you, it's pretty gory. The whole movie was way too gory, if I'm being honest. Perfect for the kids. He's running, he's running. They corner him. <laughs> That's when we first lay eyes upon our yellow god, curvaceous yellow god. Pooh. Pooh says nothing. Pooh's giving him the silent treatment. He was hurt pretty bad, okay? When you left him and went to college, you should know, by the way, that Pooh suffers from a little bit of a, an anxious attachment style, I think much like a few of you. So you might relate to Pooh throughout this movie. But somehow, Chris discovers at this point that they were actually not well off without him, and they really like took their time with the script here. I would have never left, I swear, I swear. I, I, they really loved saying the same thing. I would have never left, I swear, I swear. I, I wonder if he would have left. But then they come for him and the rest. They didn't really film, so they just drew it for you. Yeah, we don't know what they did to Chris, but this is where the movie actually starts. Yes, the prologue is over. So Zoe and her girls were going to have a little retreat in the woods. Whose woods? Pooh's wood. And one of the girls came a bit late. She got lost. Now I'm so bad at directions. But don't worry, because Pooh found her. <laughs> and then turned her into ground beef. It was a scene. Okay, not for the faint-hearted. And you know, in the in the classic nursery book converted to movie style, there was a random girl in a bikini feeling herself for absolutely no reason. It had zero, zero value was added to the story with the scene. Like literally, whose idea? Was this you? <coughs> anyway, this is where we find out that Chris from the prologue was actually not unalived. He was being held captive by Pooh. He just didn't, he couldn't unalive him, he was his bestie, you know? So, you know, he was trying to touch on that soft spot he had. I had to leave. People wouldn't understand you, too. Not like I did. I he was really going through it. The expressions on Pooh's face. The delivery of those emotions. It brought me to tears. Seeing his anxious attachment style play out that way. Yes, he was really going through it. He was. And then something triggered him and he started BDSMing Chris. Oh, yeah. I told you, it's a pretty homoerotic film. <laughs> what the f is that? Then from this point on, shit goes down. All right, we're back to this one obnoxiously sensualized girl. She's blasting music and Pooh hears it, comes over to say hi. What the f Hello? Boom. <laughs> and alive's not one, but two girls. And then feasts on honey to celebrate. Oh. Winnie the Pooh, blood on honey. Blood and honey, okay? And when he's done eating, he's back to take care of the rest. There were a few more girls to gruesomely, you know? One by one, they be dropping, dropping. Once it's Pooh and his voluptuous figure in the dark, and then it's this beautiful pink creature, Piglet. <laughs> Unprecedented beauty. You know, they, you know, you know what they say. Uh. Excels. Now the girls who are dropping like flies in the most traumatic ways ever don't seem distressed at all. Flower's dead. What? No, when they lose a friend, it's almost like they lost her at the mall. What? Where the hell is Emily? Is that her head in bits and pieces? Shit, Emily is disgusting. So they want to go and save one of their friends who Pooh captured. <laughs> Okay, so they get to the camp, but they end up rescuing other captives. Alice, we can't stay here, Alice. Jessica, there's someone else trapped here. We can't just leave them. <coughs> and then they just decide to conduct an interview mid-rescue with this one busted woman. Please. <laughs> you. What have they done to you? Oh my god, what like happened to you? Well, we know what happened to her. We have an idea of what happened to her. Pooh and Piglet. It's Pooh and Piglet! 
I never thought I would hear those words in a horror movie in my life, you know? It's Pooh and Piglet. Okay. Well, they save her. But she didn't want to be saved. She wanted revenge. I am not leaving you. grabs the pistol from the girlies, and she shoots at absolutely nothing. She wastes the one bullet they had at nothing. And not only she taunts Piglet. Piglet is mad, bitch. Piglet is mad. Pooh and Piggy, they get her, they devoured her. All the while, the girls that saved her fucking 10 minutes ago, they were still there, just sitting there, sitting tight, because this movie is turn-based. You don't do anything until it's your turn, okay? So when Pooh and Piggy were done devouring her, the girls ran. Okay, but one of them, Alex, she chose to stay. And the Muay Thai that she practiced for in a previous life came up out of nowhere, and she whoops Piglet with a sledgehammer. Not only does she knock the poor piggy out, she ties her up with the same little torture chains. The tables have turned. Not for long though, because then Pooh finds her and skewers her up. Pinned her up like a post-it note. It was a pretty gruesome scene. I'm not gonna like show it to you. But wasn't Pooh chasing the girls? Well, yeah, he heard Piggy and he came. Okay, he didn't like that Piggy was in trouble. It's kind of cute. If I'm being honest. So the rest of the girls that were running away from Pooh, Always. they were actually now running towards Pooh, but then they ran away from Pooh again. But this one girl, she needed a minute. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean you need a minute? We don't have a minute. What do you need a minute? So said, I need a minute. Would you like me to pull up a chair for you to sit and chill? While we wait for Pooh to come over and dismember us? Sam wants a minute. You can have all the minutes you need when you're dead, bitch. Don't take me with you. The girls get to the road, they find a car full of dudes. Full of bros who wanna like protect them and shit. Some kind of freak picking on them girls, huh? The bros get out, they gang up on Pooh. Poor Pooh. Poor Pooh. Say that five times. Poor Pooh, poor Pooh. Stop spitting on me, you're disgusting. Well, they gang up on him, they beat him. They really do. But he feels nothing. Bless you. He felt nothing. He just got angry. Mans took care of them like they were nothing. Like they were ants. Where were the girls that found the car at this time? Well, they were sitting in the car. In a functioning vehicle. Doing what? Watching. They didn't drive away. No, they were watching. Because this is a turn-based movie. So these dudes were getting whooped. And the girls were like, Wow. Oh my god, look at that one. Oh shit, this one's eye popped out. Is the AC on in the car? It's getting a little bit hot. No, are we gonna drive away? No. No, we're not. We're gonna wait till he's done with the dudes, the bros. And then, you know, when he's done, we're gonna get involved and try to run him over. And here's the thing about poo. When you step on it, it kind of sticks to you, right? You ever stepped on poo before? Well, Winnie the Pooh is not much different. He stuck to the car. He was on the car. They tried to, he was on the car. Don't ask me how. I really don't know. But then Chris shows up. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh's best friend. And he tries to like, beg for her life. We're remembering how things were, right? Because you know, Pooh gets them while they were in the car. Oh, I'll stay with you forever, take me instead. I'll never leave, I beg you please, please, I'll never leave. Nothing. All the girls were obliterated, obliterated, all right? In the most insane ways, and Chris Robin gets away. You've damaged Pooh. You've damaged him to the core. So this movie was about 
you know, anxious attachment styles. So this is literally you, this movie, when somebody you like doesn't text you back. That's you. You're unhinged, much like Pooh. So really the movie was just a big metaphor to your issues. Quite a horror movie. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I shouldn't give it too much depth. This was a nursery book. This was a destroyed nursery book, is what this was. It was kind of a typical horror movie, if I'm being honest with you. Like, you know, you know it's a typical horror movie when you're convinced you could have survived. You know? Honestly, you guys, did you even try to survive at this point? Like, you run away from Pooh, he leaves you. Then you run towards Pooh. What's the law? <laughs> What's the logic here? And then guess what you do? You run away from him again, but one bitch needs a minute. Like, that's insane. That was, that was an insane scene to me. Final thoughts. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey is truly a cinematic masterpiece. It's homoerotic elements, it's themes of anxious attachment styles, the thrill of seeing, you know, Winnie's voluptuous yellow figure in the dark, Piglet's vocalized emotional contributions. <laughs> The expressive eloquence of Pooh's vocal bursts. Moving to the core. No, even the, the sight of the thick, creamy honey. I, I had to leave. Dripping down from his mouth. I wish I could just catch it. Okay, this was fun. It really wasn't. But I hope you had fun. I am slightly panicking right now because in my balcony, there is a cat. I have four cats here, and I don't know how this interaction will play out because that cat is not mine. She's just a cute little, you know, street cat. Glad they're all sleeping, though. But let me know your thoughts. Would you like me to take a look at another Halloween horror movie, our next mystery movie? I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but I can tell you this. It's a little bit worse. <laughs> this one wasn't a bad movie per se, you know? If I'm being honest, the effects of the CGI was pretty good. Mm. Uh, I don't know. Now I wouldn't say too good. I don't know how to feel about Pooh's hands, the mask. Like Pooh's wrinkles were a little bit off-putting. But this other movie, oh, oh, you have not seen anything like it. So maybe we should take a look at it, you know? You'd be surprised that it was actually made in 2023. Looks like something made in the 1900s, if I'm being honest. But we can take a look at it. I think it would be fun. So if you'd like that, then, you know, drop this video a thumbs up. Ask me. Tell me in the comments. Tell me if you would like me to make a video about that. You know, I won't. I won't. Unless we get to like 100k likes. Yeah, the bar is high. Because the shit I have to go through, it's pretty rough. The bar is high. 100k likes. But that was pretty much it, guys. Let me know your thoughts on um, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. And what are you going to be for Halloween? Comment down below, guys. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to be. I'm going to post a picture of it, probably after Halloween's over. Because I'm always late to everything. You know, I actually hope this video makes it before Halloween. If it does, cheer. Cheer. Cheer for me. Applaud. Applaud right now. All right, bye guys.